All right, welcome, welcome. We're gonna go ahead and jump in uh, and begin for uh, today. Uh, we have a wonderful topic lined up uh, for uh, those of us who are interested in, of course, moving forward uh, in the B2G sector. Uh, and today's topic, of course, will be social media strategies that win government contracts. And so uh, we are very fortunate, uh, of course, uh, to have our uh, presenters here with us today. I'll introduce them shortly. Uh, first, I'm Lou Smith, I'm working with the Washington Area Community Investment Fund, otherwise known as WACIF. And we um, are especially uh, glad to have with us today both uh, Sheila and Rebecca on the line here. And of course, Estinette's helping us from WACIF as well. And um, I want to first introduce them. Uh, I'm going to first go ahead and um, introduce uh, Sheila here, of course. Uh, Sheila Edmondson, she's uh, a procurement and technical assistance specialist over at the DC PTAC program. Sheila, welcome aboard. If you can please give a brief introduction of yourself, and then we'll go ahead and pass it along to Rebecca. Thank you. Um, uh, as Luke mentioned, uh, my name is Sheila Edmondson. I have been with the DCP TAC for quite some time now. And um, I work with about, we work with a large database of over a thousand clients providing support for them, um, assisting them in government contracting efforts, proposals, marketing, other um, areas of government contracting. And we are very excited to be working with WACIF today. And um, we're very excited to have Rebecca um, with us to present on social media. And I'll let Rebecca take over. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, thank you everyone for um you know, having me over uh, to present today, I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share if that's okay. And if for one second, uh, Rebecca, I just want to do a couple things here just so folks sure. can know where to uh, find us. And I know that today we have a very, very rich topic uh, that we're going to get into. Um, and of course, they will know where to find us. And as a matter of fact, because I know this topic is so powerful and rich, what I'm going to do, Rebecca, is to come back around at the end of your presentation. Okay. And I'll do this portion here because I know that folks really want to get into the meat of everything and learn about what you have to share with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end that. We'll, we'll change that up a bit here. I'll end the screen share here uh, one second, and you can go ahead and take over. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Again, thank you so much for the hospitality in um, hosting us today. Here's my contact information. Um, I am the Director of Business Development for SCORE Corpus Christi down here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, feel free to take down my information if you'd like to contact me um, further uh, for further information about the things that we'll share today um, about digital marketing, social media, how to get found online, and um, that type. we're going to cover all those types of subjects. A little bit about SCORE, uh, we provide free confidential business mentoring to start and grow your small business. Um, there are over 300 SCORE chapters across the United States, including one in the DC metro area. So, um, you know, feel free to contact SCORE. You've probably heard about SCORE. Um, you know, it, it, it's been around for a very long time. And uh, again, there's different chapters across the country, depending on where you live. Do you probably have a SCORE chapter near you? Um, but feel free to also connect with SCORE Corpus Christi. Um, there's nothing to say that you can't have mentors across the United States. So you could meet with me for digital marketing. You could meet um, with, uh, you know, somebody locally for something else. Um, what, for whatever your, um, you know, your, your needs are, um, you could meet with different mentors for different subject matters. Um, you can go to score.org to look at different business tools and templates. Um, there, if you, you need to write a business plan, if you need, um, you know, some basics on financials, uh, there's a ton of free templates that you could download at score.org. And, um, and, and there's our website there. So I'm gonna get started. Um, uh, I guess it's been about a month or so ago, um, but 
when you tried to log into Facebook, you probably saw something similar to this message. And uh, the reason I'm going to start up on this is because to drive home the point that, and I'm going to talk about this a uh, couple of times during today's um, webinar, is that if you don't have your own website and you're relying on social media to be your website for you, the time has come to um, double down your efforts and create a website. Take the time, take the investment, the money investment, the time investment to get your own website going. Um, Facebook was dark for about four or five hours, uh, you know, about a month ago. And um, a lot of businesses couldn't transact, you know, their sales. They couldn't do business because Facebook went down. So imagine relying on another company for the, for the sole interaction for your business. So you don't want to, um, you know, rely on one you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. So, um, and also I still have some small businesses tell me, well, I don't need a website. I have a Facebook business page. Well, guess what? You don't own your Facebook business page. Facebook owns your business page. So again, if Facebook goes down or Facebook goes away, um, that where's all your content that you're sending people? It's on Facebook servers. So it's so important to, to still maintain and uh, own your own website. Here, here's just a couple of stats. 44% um, of federal decision makers um, download content from vendors that they work with. And I, I drive this point home because um, each one of you should uh, align yourselves as a subject matter expert in some area. And that will help you not only with, sub, uh, with social media content for your YouTube, for your um, Facebook, for your Instagram, for your LinkedIn, whichever social network that you choose to use, but it's also gonna help you stand out from your competitors. Um, if you come out with uh, specific uh, areas of expertise that you could either present on or present a white paper on, um, maybe have a special download that people can go to your website and download top five ways to X, Y, Z. Uh, top three things to look out for when X, Y, Z, whatever your area of expertise is, um, it's a great way to, um, to not only share content that, um, that is relevant to your audience, um, but it also elevates you as a subject matter expert. So, um, and, and it, it just really helps set you apart from the crowd. And then further to that point, 73% of decision makers will download and share online content with colleagues and their supervisors. Again, um, this type of data uh, tells us that there is a need for that. Um, now it's easier than ever, thanks to more online webinars happening. Um, there's more uh, opportunities for people to share, uh, for people to be subject matter experts, to hold webinars. And um, because of this, this gives you great opportunity for some content for your social network sites, for your website. And again, it'll help you stand out uh, among your competitors. So why aren't more small businesses online? Well, some people believe that digital tools are not relevant. Uh, some people think that they're not effective or they say that there's just not enough time to learn. Um, it, it, it does take some time to learn and a lot of small business owners, um, they're busy running their business, right? It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time to run your business. I get that. Um, but um, Today, we're gonna to talk about giving you more of a foundation so that if you just do some of these basic things that we talk about today, you're gonna to be in a much better position. And hopefully, as you start seeing success, you'll wanna explore some of the other things that you can do. So here's top five steps for online marketing success. 
talk about the number. And if you've ever seen um, online social media content from uh, listicles like uh, BuzzFeed, other social, um, social networking apps, um, they use numbers, right? That's something key for you to take away from if you're interested in doing uh, online content, uh, being a subject matter expert in the future. Um, numbers, uh, people love to see numbers in lists. And especially when you give them out in bullet points, um, they like to, to uh, digest tidbits of information. So the, this top five, top three, uh, top 10 ways to X, Y, Z. Um, think about that for your future um, content when you're writing your content for your blog, for your uh, social networking, that type of thing. But here, here are the, these five steps. You want to ensure your business can be found online. Stay in touch with new and existing customers. And one of those ways is email marketing. Uh, create a plan to generate and repeat business and encourage and um, engage with different types of online interaction. And then you wanna measure your success. And we'll go through those um, through the presentation. So again, here's what we're gonna cover, uh, how people find you online, how to set yourself up for success and how it all comes together. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, CMMC and uh, for those of you, I'm sure everyone here has heard of it, um, but uh, just as, you know, just in case there's anybody out there who has not heard of it, it's the cybersecurity capability maturity model. And the DOD is rolling this out in phases. The Department of Defense is rolling this out in phases. So right now there's not a whole lot of information about how it's, this is gonna affect social media but there are some things that we could put on our radar um, to be aware of and understand that um, things are going to be really different in, in dealing with the DOD and the federal government um, once CMC, CMMC really starts to come into play for, for, for uh, government contracting. So one of the first things to understand is that we need to learn and train employees on cyber hygiene habits. And so when you're thinking about the password for your Facebook, for your Instagram, for your LinkedIn, um, make sure that they're passwords that cannot be easily, um, easily guessed. So we're talking about passwords that are at least eight to 10 characters long, uh, upper and lowercase, and insert symbols in, in between uh, letters. Um, the best passwords are not full words. They are just, it just looks like a bunch of numbers and a bunch of, um, you know, symbols, upper and lowercase. I know that can get a little annoying because we, we like to have passwords for our social media accounts that we can remember in case we, we get logged out or we can remember them really easily. Um, but gone are the days where we could do stuff like that. Um, we need to really remember that um, first and foremost, um, our data is important to protect. And um, unfortunately, there's people out there that their job 24 seven is to ruin people's lives through hacking. So um, it's they're, they're, they're coming up with new ways every day on how to hack into stuff and um, you don't want to have that vulnerability. So now um, people that do government contracting will, will have to have to do their due diligence about researching uh, the companies that they're gonna be dealing with and, and understanding how companies store the data that, that you have secured on their sites. For instance, we're gonna have to be really careful about cloud computing um, and what we store in the cloud and who we store things in the cloud with. So that's something for, for you to, um, to assess and, and understand that uh, controlling unclassified information, uh, the CUI, 
um, is going to be extremely important. The DOD is going to be really, really cracking down on, on how you're um, storing data in the cloud, as well as on your um, offline storage devices. So it's super important to understand what these companies that you're dealing with, with your social media, um, how they're storing your, your personal information and your client's information. So for instance, if you're using an email marketing platform like Constant Contact, Vertical Response, Gov Delivery, um, there's dozens and dozens of email marketing companies out there. They're storing your uh, client's data in their databases. So eventually it will come to pass that these companies are gonna to have to become CMMC compliant as well. Um, eventually, it's not gonna happen overnight, but these companies are doing what they can to get up to speed on what they're, they're gonna require on their end um, with their, within their platforms to get um, clearance from the government for government contractors to use their products. Um, stuff like GoDaddy, stuff like website builders, things like that. Um, they're all going to have to get um, some sort of clearance. Is, that's what I'm hearing right now. Again, there's nothing official. A um, lot of this is uh, still being built as we speak. So your email domains. Um, the government is going to steer you away from using Gmail, Yahoo. They, they are, those are really highly hackable highly. Uh, it's super easy to, to, to break into a Gmail account and Yahoo account. Um, so they are very, 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 um, they're going to really lock down on small businesses using, um, you know, Joe's, you know, whatever, Joe's electric at gmail.com. Uh, so what I suggest you do is when you get that website, um, go ahead and purchase those emails with your website's domain. So it's Joe's Electric, or you could say Joe at joeselectric.com. So you can have Joe's Electric as your domain name uh, for your website. And um, so you can get that matching gene, uh, that matching email. Um, there, there, there are more secure platforms uh, through Gmail, you could purchase um, that the cloud computing um, app through Gmail to run your uh, website email through Gmail if you really, really prefer Gmail, but it's going to cost a little extra. And it comes with a lot more security um, along with that. So, but it's something to consider and something to know that that's coming down the pike. So um, it's, it's going to, this is all going to be largely based on access control, data management, file storage, again, the protection of uh, that critical CUI, that unclassified um, information. Um, so again, this is just increasing awareness and training for your employees, for yourself, and understanding that CMMC, it, it, look at the broader picture, look at the picture of anything digital, any, any kind of digital touch point. Um, it, it has to be, have some consideration and we'll learn more about what that looks like from the government as, as time unfolds. So going back to digital marketing. So, Here's the one thing I want you to understand as we go through the material today. Business is built on relationships. People like to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So ask yourself, where does most of your business come today? You know, a lot of people say that um, word of mouth happens online now, and it's true. A lot of what gets done, um, it, you know, it's important to recognize that word of mouth happens online. So whether people are mentioning their favorite businesses directly or consuming and sharing content that they find useful or entertaining from those businesses, um, your business has an opportunity to be part of more of those conversations. So if you're part of those conversations, you increase the chances of people recommending or seeking you out when they need what you offer. So where do people 
go if they're looking for more information about your business. They basically they go to a Google search. And remember, there's not there's more so there's more uh, search engines out there, but Google is the number one search engine in the world. And uh, the number two search engine in the world is YouTube, believe it or not. YouTube is considered a search engine. And then after that, um, fall the smaller search in, engines like Bing, Yahoo, and then um, there's a new one that's called DuckDuckGo that uh, doesn't store your private data, um, but it's not as rich of a search engine as Google. Google still is on top of the pile there. So when you're breaking down what people are looking for when they Google something, here's how it's broken down. It, it's, it'll start off with a paid ad if anybody is paying for the search words that you put in the search box. So it'll always be um, very apparent. It'll, it'll have a little uh, box with ad and it'll be a different color than everything else. And uh, but just below that is the organic result. Organic means free, so uh, no cost. Um, and then the Google business profile is on the right. And I have a whole webinar on how to build your Google business profile. It used to be Google My Business, and they just recently changed that to Google business profile. So uh, if you're not, if you don't have that claimed, um, definitely take advantage of it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And if you've ever done advertising with Google, you know that uh, Google doesn't give much away, but they do give your Google business profile away. So it is free to build um, and it can act as its own social network almost because you can update it daily with, with different updates. Um, you could do a status update just like you do on Facebook. Um, you can add your own photos, you could add your hours, your contact information. Um, this is where you uh, manage your Google reviews. And I'm hoping that if you do have some Google reviews and you do have your Google business profile, that you're interacting with those reviews because that is very important to let people know that you are reading them. And if somebody does rate something lower than, than your goal is, that you reach out to them and respond and do it publicly. Um, don't hash everything out publicly. Uh, just respond to them publicly. Say, hey, I'd like to protect your private information, uh, but please reach out to us at this email uh, so we can talk about this because this is not the way we do business. So I, I want to make this right for you. So it's really important that you have those types of basic conversations online. So other people that see those reviews understand that uh, that you care and um, that your customer service is your top priority. So further down the search page, you're gonna see reviews about you um, or whatever you searched. Um, it might be uh, a Wikipedia page, it might be social media links, things like that. So we've come to the time in our world that if you're not online, it's almost as if you don't exist. So it is extremely crucial that you have an online presence and it's not too late. The good news is it's not too late. It's never too late. So uh, one of the first things that I would suggest if you don't have a digital presence at all is to build that Google business profile. It's free. It's really easy to use, easy to build, um, and uh, it doesn't take too much time at all. Um, if you want a step-by-step -step guide, I have a webinar where we build it live. Uh, during my webinar, I take you step-by-step -step on building it. So maybe that's something that we could offer in the future, but um, you know, that's, that's the reality of it. And, and another important reason you need to be online, your competitors are online. So if your competitors are online and you're not, um, it's as if you don't exist and they do, and they're going to win those important contracts. So search for what your business should be found for. Have you Googled yourself lately? Have you Googled your, your name, 
your, your personal name, your business name, and, and figure it out what people are finding when they Google you or your, um, your industry. Um, it's going to be based on, on your location, but it's really, it's a really eye-opening experience uh, for most small businesses that I've assisted uh, going through and, and figuring out what people are saying uh, about your business, what pops up, what kind of, uh, you know, pages pop up uh, through a search. Uh, it's, it's quite a revelation and I highly suggest that you do that. And it'll help you understand SEO. SEO is search engine optimization. I could do a whole webinar just on SEO. It is so incredibly important. Um, there are so many things that go into what helps you show up on a website in a search. Um, having a Google business profile helps you get found online. Um, even if people aren't searching for your business, um, it might show up. Um, depending upon how many other people with your type of business show up. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of different things. Uh, the strength of your website, the speed of your website. If you have a pretty fast website, you'll get higher in the search results. If you have a really slow website, Google is going to say um, your website is not worth being in the first page. So your website will be further down, maybe it's like the fifth or sixth page. So um, a really speedy website is extremely important. Um, having your website found on uh, partner websites will help you boost your SEO, your search engine optimization. For example, um, Score Corpus Christi, uh, Score Corpus Christi's website can be found on our Chamber website. So um, it, it's a link that shows that we're reputable and um, that helps get boost our website, uh, the more times that our website is hosted on somebody else's. So again, analyze what people are finding when they click through and, and, and understand um, you know, why these listings are coming up. And maybe there's an old listing or maybe there's an old website that's not relevant and you could work on getting that taken down and, and replacing it with your new website. Um, you know, understand um, the difference between organic and paid uh, and, and understand, you know, why your social media channels aren't on the first page. Your, first, your social media channels should show up um, when you Google your business uh, on the first page of a Google search. If not, maybe you're not posting often enough, or maybe your business Facebook doesn't match your website or doesn't match the name. Uh, so everything should be uniform. It's a branding thing that you need to consider and that um, yeah, everything should be uniform. Your website, your Facebook, your Twitter, your LinkedIn should all have the same business name, should all have the same color, the same logo. Uh, I've seen it time and time again where a business will come in and say, um, I'm not sure what to do with my LinkedIn. And I, I take a look and their LinkedIn is three logos ago. <laughs> so they haven't updated their logo on their LinkedIn, but they did it on their Facebook. Um, it's really important uh, for branding and for consistency that everything have a similar look and feel, similar colors, the same exact logo, your latest logo um, for uniformity. It also helps Google search engine um, uh, get you higher in those listings. So Google visitors want to see that your information is correct, that you're answering their potential questions, that the reviews meet their expectations. Um, those Google reviews are, are really important. People do make decisions based on Google reviews. And they wanna see that you're engaging and interacting with people. So you mm. always wanna make sure that your website is up to date and it, it should have your basic information so they can see what you offer and any other details that they need about your business. So, you know, objectively look at your, your, all your digital touch points and, and, and try to assess what opinions are your uh, customers forming about you. Um, you know, you want to engage in conversations on social media. Uh, when they interact with you, interact with them back. 
if they if somebody tags you in a post, respond to it, uh, comment, share it. Um, if you were to have a conversation with somebody in person and they said something to you, you would respond, right? <laughs> so don't forget that's the same way in digital, in the digital world, nobody likes to feel ignored. So if you don't respond to somebody's uh, post online, or at least say, thanks so much for the shout out, we really appreciate your, your business, um, it's, it's gonna leave them feeling cold. And, and, and having people interact with you online is the perfect opportunity. It's like a gift. So it doesn't happen all the time to a lot of businesses. So you want to go ahead and jump on that when people do comment on your stuff, when people do share your stuff or tag you, things like that. So um, respond to those reviews. I mentioned it earlier, but good and bad. If, if somebody has a bad uh, time or a bad experience in working with you, um, it, it's really important that you respond publicly and let people know that you're taking care of the situation, that you're addressing the situation, that you want to make it right. Customer service is your top priority and you don't want anybody to just be disappointed, but don't uh, air any dirty laundry publicly. Um, you want to just tell them publicly, hey, I'm going to protect your privacy, your private information, but please contact me. Um, privately so we can take care of the situation for you. And a lot of times people will change their, their star review once they get um, the satisfaction. So set yourself up to be part of the conversations that are happening online. Make sure you're present, you're engaging, you're interacting and providing resources that help people talk about you. Online marketing works best when you're not just dumping links in and shouting to the masses. You want to be present, be helpful, be human. People want to remember that there's a human behind all these posts. So when people search for your business or things related to your business, even keywords related to your business, you'll want to make sure your business shows up. And when they click through, you'll want to provide what they're hoping to find and make sure that the information that they find is relevant and accurate. So now we're going to talk about how it all comes together. Again, here are these uh, five tools for, um, for getting online. And um, you want to make sure you have a mobile responsive website. A few years ago, a few years ago, Google um, basically mandated that um, all websites be uh, mobile responsive. What does that mean? That your website can still be navigated on a smartphone, and you'll you'd be surprised how many websites web, websites still are not mobile responsive. Meaning that I try, I go on desktop and it looks great, but then I go to my mobile phone and it's got all these weird frames and things don't line up correctly and it looks all wonky. Um, Google mandated a few years ago that they will not let um, websites that are not mobile responsive get found on their search engines. So they find that it's very, very important um, more than ever, basically a necessity to have a mobile responsive website. You want to get yourself a great email marketing tool. I mentioned earlier, there's dozens of email marketing companies out there. Um, but whatever you do, if you're doing email marketing from your Yahoo or your Gmail, please stop. <laughs> uh, you don't want to send email marketing messages to them to you know more than 50 people at a time using your Gmail or, or your Yahoo account. Um, the likelihood of very many of those people getting those emails is very slim. Um, because uh, because of the, the, the hackability of Gmail accounts, uh, they're putting a pretty tight rein on um, people sending emails to the masses through the Gmail app itself. So um, if you send an email to 100 people using your Gmail account, probably I would say maybe 5 to 10% of those people actually get that email. But of course you would never know because you're not using an email marketing tool. When you use an email marketing tool, I mentioned earlier, GovDelivery, MailChimp, 
uh, vertical response, Robly, constant contact. There's dozens of them out there. When you use an email marketing tool like that, um, you could track who's opened your email, what time they opened up, what, what they clicked on, uh, what, they, what, um, what part of the email was the focus of the email, um, who opened it, how many times they opened it. Um, it you just get so much rich data from uh, using an email marketing tool. It's extremely important. So the third one, uh, choosing a primary social channel. I'm not here to tell you that it's important for you to be on every digital touch point available online. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, who has time for that, right? Uh, I'm not here to say that you need to, be, you need to be on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and have a website and have an email marketing tool and do a Google business profile. Um, that's a lot, right? Have one primary social channel. So Facebook, choose LinkedIn. Um, most, um, most people in government contracting prefer LinkedIn. And um, I love that tool. It's gotten much more rich over the last few years, meaning that it, it's robust with contacts and, um, and it, it has a lot of great interaction on, within the business to business community. So um, if you were to choose just one, my personal favorite for B2B would be um, LinkedIn. The fourth one, up-to-date business listings. So make sure to update your Google business profile, but also remember, don't forget about Bing. Don't forget about Yahoo search. Um, those are not as popular. However, um, if you live in a smaller community, people might be able to find you easier and get break through the clutter by using um, one of those smaller search engines. So uh, it, it probably would not hurt to at least uh, put a placeholder for your business on some of the smaller ones. And then finally, you wanna create engaging content. So uh, what is engaging content? We'll dive into that in a little bit, but it's stuff that reminds people that you are a, a live person, right? It's easy to, to get, um, bogged down in the impersonal, somebody is flat on the screen and there's not really somebody talking behind, you know, behind the curtain. And um, the, mo the more times that you have uh, the chance to add the human side to stuff, the, most, the more interaction that you're going to have with people. So it's not just about shouting to the masses, hey, I'm having this event register now, register now. It's always the same stuff. Some, some social networks, some, some uh, places just shout stuff out and you don't wanna get into that rut. Um, you wanna remember that, uh, that the, you know, to remind people that you still believe in that human interaction. So what does that look like? It might look like um, here locally, there is a heating and air conditioning place that, um, somebody dumped a dog on their front doorstep. And these folks at this heating and air conditioning place decided they were gonna adopt the dog and it would be the office mascot. So they, somebody cleverly, very cleverly posted to their Facebook business page and they had a contest to name the dog and the winner um, chose, the winning name for the dog was Freon. And then pretty soon people were bringing a uh, little doggy outfits and treats and food and a dog bowl <laughs> to the business. And it, it became the home of Freon. And it gave them a lot of great play on social. It got their name, uh, got some great recognition. And uh, it, it's just engaging content. It, it reminds people that, hey, these people are living human beings and and they're doing great things in the world. And so you wanna remind people that of all the wonderful things that you do. So talking about a mobile responsive website, um, nearly everything we do online goes back to your website. So let's talk about um, what we need to do to make sure um, what kind of content is on our website. Again, first and foremost, you wanna make sure it's mobile friendly. 
Um, you'll likely get very little business if it's not mobile friendly. And then plus Google does not want to get, let you get found online. Um, it's just really easy to set up. Um, and it doesn't, it do, doesn't have to cost three to $5,000 anymore to have a website. Um, there are some really easy to use, interactive, intuitive programs online now that you could use to build your own website. And it takes, you know, not long at all. Um, there are still some situations though, where it does take a, a professional website designer, you know, to uh, design a website. The only thing I'm going to say about that is that be careful who you use for website designers. Um, I've been doing what I'm doing for small businesses for the last 11 years. And in those 11 years, I've had a good amount of people, at least six or seven small businesses tell me that they gave somebody that said that they were a website designer thousands of dollars and never saw them again. So be, please be very, very careful when choosing a website designer. Get references. Talk to people that have used the company. Uh, go, go do your research and due diligence about the companies that you're about to invest a lot of money in if you do have the money to invest in a, in a really nice website. So uh, tips for using images on your website. Images are really, really important, obviously. Uh, they tell a lot about your, your business. Uh, the, the one thing that I wanna mention about uh, photos is um, people can smell a stock photo from a mile away at this point, right? So um, you want to be really careful about relying a whole lot on stock photos. Um, your website is yours, and um, you know there are two hundred, there are Fortune two hundred companies that are telling their social media teams to use their iPhones for um, for website. Uh, photos for uh, social media interactions. So, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with you doing that as well. Um, you know, you own your photos. That's the best reason. Um, you, you definitely, if you don't have your own photos and you have to rely on stuck photos, um, please don't Google image anything <laughs> because you don't, you don't want to get into a situation where um, you're sharing photos that you don't have permission and they come and track you down and try to um, get royalties from you for using their photo uh, without permission. And I've had a colleague um, had that happen to him and he uh, used five photos in an email without permission and he got a cease and desist letter and they wanted $5,000 per photo. And um, his lawyer was able to talk them down to one. So he still paid $5,000 for those five photos. So don't make that kind of mistake. Um, it is easier to track more than ever when somebody downloads a photo from the Google images. Um, there's information on the back end that people can see and they can see, um, they can get a network ID from, uh, from the back end on who downloaded that photo and then it can do research. And if they really wanted to, they could come after you. So it's not worth it. So, uh, you know, social media doesn't have to overwhelm you. Um, you don't have to be on all social channels, but I do recommend you claiming your name on so all social channels. Um, pick one name for your primary use. Um, you could drive people to your website. Um, you know, the, the one reason why I recommend claiming your name is because somebody else might do that later on and you don't want to miss out on on getting your name. Um, so if you were thinking about maybe having a, a, a Facebook uh, for your business um, and you're solely doing LinkedIn, go ahead and claim the Facebook business name that you want. So that way it's there and ready for you when someday you do want to activate it. Another thing is I want you to understand is that each social channel has their own personality. So I, I get asked every, almost every day about using um, something like Hootsuite to auto post what I post on Facebook, to LinkedIn, to Twitter, to all these other social channels. And I, I, I don't recommend that 
because um, you should not be posting the exact same thing on every channel. You can have the same theme, but you need to modify each uh, social channel to suit that specific genre. So, um, you know, ultimately the goal should be bringing people back to your website and, and getting people to join your email list, hopefully. So, um, you know, it, I know it sounds really easy and like a time saver to um, post into a, a, an app like Hootsuite and post one time and it goes automatically out to, to different sites. Um, but that's just not the way that, that these social networks are built. They're different different audiences, different um, personalities, and they should have different content for each one. Again, you could have the same theme, the same idea, but they're just gonna have to be worded differently. So you wanna match your approach to the social channel. So on Facebook, it's more about competing with friends, um, family, you know, catching up on news. Uh, LinkedIn, it's professional networking. Uh, Instagram is highly visual. Uh, Twitter, it, it's uh, real-time information, you know, breaking news, that type of thing. Pinterest is visual tips, um, DIY, you know, do it yourself. And then YouTube, um, you know, do you have something to share? Do you have some educational video, um, like a webinar like today? Um, you know, things that people can learn. Um, I, I highly recommend YouTube for search engine optimization. Remember who's the number two search engine in the world? YouTube. People search YouTube for everything. My 71 year old mom YouTube how to put a zipper in a pair of blue jeans and she did it just by YouTube video. So people of all ages are YouTubing. And um, if you if you want a great SEO tip, uh, start start posting your, your videos to YouTube. So again, you wanna modify your posts to suit the channel. So here's a, a Netflix example for, um, for one channel and then a Netflix example for another. So one's uh, Instagram and the other's Twitter. They say the same type of thing, but they go about it different ways. You wanna be relatable. People want to build relationships. So you wanna create awareness, show people that you uh, can do customer service uh, through these so social channels, um, you know, give people a call to action. So, yeah, I think it was something like 84% of consumers are more likely to take action based on personal recommendations. So that goes, that goes to say for, um, you know, not just a family member, but a colleague. Um, so when referred by a friend, people are four times as more likely to make that purchase. So again, at the very least, claim your Facebook page, your Google business profile, um, maybe even your Yelp and ensure all your information is up to date. Okay, if I can interrupt you for one second. Sure. Um, everyone, if you would uh, please take a look at the uh, Q&A section for questions. If you have questions, please place them there. Uh, and not in the chat. We want to make sure that we get all of your questions uh, answered, but please separate those questions uh, just for us visually so that we can uh, segment everything into the Q&A section. And um, I'll give it back to you, uh, Rebecca, and let's keep a, a bit of a fur of my own time. We want to be uh, cognizant of, of everyone's time here. I know that we're supposed to end at 11, but we would love it if you can join and stay on uh, beyond that time so that we can cover everything for you. It's a bit hard to squeeze everything within a one hour time frame. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, you wanna create content and increase your chances of getting found online. So that SEO is really important, uh, that search engine optimization, getting those keywords out there. A great way to get SEO value for your website is to start a blog. And, and paid ads. It, it's important if you have money to spend, um, paid ads work beautifully on Facebook and Instagram and Google ads. 
Um, but the thing that I want to recommend, if you are interested in Google ads, make sure you find somebody that can help you or uh, learn more as much as you can, um, because Google does make it a little bit cumbersome and it can get a little confusing. So, um, and I, I, I've had one instance where somebody walked into my office and said, I don't know how this happened, but I spent $3,000 on Google ads this week and I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> and when, when you're starting, when you're setting up your Google ads, one of the first things that happens is Google asks you to put your credit card on file. So to avoid that, either get an expert to help you with it or learn as much as you can. Google has a bunch of classes that you can take online where they teach you um, or find a, an intern that's willing to learn and, and get them on board. Um, but it, it, it can be really successful for your business uh, to go down the, the road with Google ads. So some key points to remember for increased social media engagement. Again, be human, be relatable. Uh, create a vision for your company, uh, connect with what you're doing with your ideal audience. You want to create a brand voice that speaks directly to your audience. Um, people want to do business with companies that they know, like, and trust. Don't forget that. And don't be afraid to try new things, maybe like live streaming a webinar or uh, resharing crowdsourcing content. Um, here's one app that I like for visual storytelling. Um, it's called Pictory and it helps you really put together a video very nicely and professional looking. Um, I love Canva for, for graphic design, easy graphic design. Um, and they have pre-made templates and you just drop in your information, drop in your logo and uh, it's ready to go. And they have all sorts, any type of graphic design project, you can find it on here. So here's how you can take action. Create that mobile responsive website as a resource. Um, interact and engage with people on social media. Engage with those reviews. Don't be afraid to respond to them, say thanks so much. Or if you have a, a, an issue, somebody has a problem, don't be afraid to respond to that either. Um, also, be on the lookout. It's important that you, you're checking these Google reviews. Um, here in, in my city, we recently had an instance with um, heating and air conditioning places being spammed uh, from overseas companies, um, giving them bad, fake, bad reviews. Um, a few companies had 30 fake reviews, bad, uh, saying that they, they stood up the client was stood up or for their appointment, they got bad service, they, you know, all sorts of awful things. So it's important to stay on top of it because something like that could be happening and you weren't even aware because you weren't checking your Google reviews. Um, I recommend email marketing and it's an opportunity for you to provide exclusive, helpful and promotional content. You can amplify those efforts with paid advertising. Um, just uh, make sure you either consult with an expert that that's their subject matter, uh, that's their expertise. Um, so you don't uh, spend money um, unwisely because it's easy for both Facebook and Google ads to, to um, not spend your money very well. If you don't- Rebecca, Sorry, but, just to jump in on that topic, and we have a question here with regard to uh, how one can create a link at the bottom of an email um, where a client will be allowed to uh, go to a page to submit a Google review. Uh, is this possible? And if so, uh, can you briefly explain how this would be done? Just what so makes it easy, you know, really easy as you're corresponding with clients for them to go out and give you that review? Sure. Um, any, you can utilize any um, email marketing platform. Like I had mentioned earlier, um, you could send out that email to key clients and say, hey, we appreciate your business and uh, we'd love for you to give us a review. And when you build an email through one of these platforms, it's super easy to build an email. They're so intuitive. Most of them are super intuitive. 
And um, it's really easy to build that link. Um, I have webinars on email marketing if uh, we, we, you'd like to uh, connect and uh, we could. Um, you Rebecca, know. possibly that's something that after we could follow up and we can share that with if you if you would like, we could share that with the audience. Sure, sure. OK, cool. Yeah, yeah. we'll connect after. And that's it. All right, so uh, thank you. This is a very rich uh, topic and subject matter. Uh, Rebecca, I do want to thank you here. And forgive me, we're a little out of order just in terms of um, how we're going to go about the presentation today. And um, I do know that, of course, from giving uh, Zoom presentations over the past <coughs> year and a half that we uh, definitely um, want to get to it and give folks the information that we need. Um, we do want to go to... Um, a to do a, a couple of things here. The presentation today, of course, is brought by, to you by the DC uh, PTAC, uh, Procurement and Technical Assistance uh, Center uh, here within Washington, DC and WACIF. I do want to give a bit of time to um, I have this information uh, given to you by Sheila Edmondson of the DC PTAC uh, so that she can go over with you just what they offer and how to get in contact with them. Of course, they are the uh, reason that we were able to have this wonderful presentation today here given uh, by Re uh, Rebecca. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over uh, to you. Uh, if you can take over your screen, uh, I'll take over the screen here, Sheila. Thanks. Thank you. And I will make this really quick because I know that um, um, we want to receive more information about WACIF. And also, if there are any more questions, this will be really quick. <clears throat> And I am Sheila Edmondson. And just for those who are not familiar with um, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center program, um, this slide goes over how it was um, initiated in 1985. Um, due to an act by Congress, and it's administered by the Department of Defense, specifically um, right now, the Defense Logistics Agency moving, well, actually has moved over to the small business office in the Department of Defense. And your host, our host agency, which is the Department of Small and Local Business Development with DC government, provides our matching um, funds for as our host. Um, DCP TAC provides procurement technical assistance to small businesses that are located in the District of Columbia. There are approximately 96 or so um, procurement technical assistance centers throughout the United States, including Puerto Rico and Guam, to assist small businesses in navigating the government procurement process. Um, a little bit more easily. Um, we provide the, the, the resources and everything that each business needs. We meet them where they are. So what do we do? We actually provide outreach, education, certification, marketing um, assistance. Um, marketing is one of the primary areas that we provide assistance. And so I, we're super excited to have Rebecca here because social media is something that has come into play um, so heavily over the past two years with us being unable to engage face to face. Um, so we've all had to use a bit more social media and email marketing and telephoning in order to connect with those target agencies. And a tip that I always recommend for LinkedIn, and Rebecca, you can let me know if, if this is, is correct or not, but I always recommend when, when a business reaches out to connect with someone on LinkedIn, please craft a message, craft a unique message for each person that you are trying to connect with. Let them know why you would like to connect how you um, found them 
and why you think it would be beneficial for both you and that other person to connect. Also, another recommendation for LinkedIn is joining groups. Um, when you join relevant groups that your target um, that your target agencies, that stakeholders that work within those target agencies, um, what groups do they belong to, and how can you can contribute? How can you contribute to the conversation in those groups to be seen as a thought leader and a subject matter expert? And that's like one of my tips for LinkedIn because. Um, I received so many um, requests, but I don't know why, um, you know, they would want to connect with me, but then there are some and they will tell me exactly why and, and, you know, and that is very helpful to making a connection. And to follow up on what Rebecca said um, regarding people doing business with people that they like, know, and trust, that is so accurate and what other way can people get to know you um put your business online because they have to know you exist to get to know you to get to like you and to get to trust you so that's um a reason why you should have your website online um and three tips for staying competitive for engaging your target markets and, um, and staying relevant. But as you see on this slide, we also assist with pre-contract management, post-contract award. And what does that mean? We assist businesses, <clears throat> we assist businesses with, with determining suitability for contracting. For we assist you in securing necessary regist registrations, um, becoming certified, um, marketing, researching um, procurement history, um, networking, identifying opportunities to bid. So if you are um, seeking assistance with government contracting and your business is located in the District of Columbia, please reach out to um, the DCP TAC for guidance. If your business is located in another state, um, you can visit the APTAC website, which is the Association for Procurement Technical Assistance Centers um, to locate the PTAC that's closest to your business. Who can work with PTAC? We work with government, we work with small, we work with large. How do we work with large? Large businesses often come to us for, for um, look, seeking small business partners um, for specific, with a specific um, skill set or specific um, certification. And we work with small businesses and helping them um, increase their capacity and increase their knowledge of government contracting. How do we work with the government? By educating the small business community on how best to do business with each particular agency. And if you are interested in working with DCP TAC, please reach out to our intake coordinator, Ms. Michelle Harris. Um, her email is on the slide. Our team is listed on the slide. Mr. Milton Goodman is our program manager. I'm Sheila Edmondson. And the rest of our team, Vanessa, Earl, and Keith, um, are standing by for anyone who would be interested in working with us. And thank you so much, um, Lucien and Estanet for having us and Lyles for having us today. Thank you, Sheila. And um, it's Lucian, everyone calls me Lou. What I'd like oh. to do, uh, we're gonna, and we're gonna get to your questions uh, here for uh, Rebecca, because that was a, an extremely rich presentation. And folks, please keep in mind, the DCP TAC is here to help you. Uh, all things government contracting, we really wanna make use of these resources that we have at hand. Also, I want to make sure that you understand that uh, as uh, Rebecca goes through uh, these questions and gives these answers to you, 
um, that if, it, it's very important that you seek out an expert. And of course, as she's going to be able to explain to you, uh, this may not always be a do-it-yourself sort of job to manage your own social media, to move throughout, you know, engaging with customers online. We know that you're extremely busy. Your days are full and packed as is. And so being able to seek out that expert to be able to, to do this for you may also be something that you may want to explore as well. And remember, go to the folks who do this. They really do this. And so it's uh, important for you to identify those who have worked with who work with business owners and especially those who are in that business to government space, that business to business space where they're looking to um, identify and, and work with uh, contract officers um, and procurement officers that will allow for you to uh, a win. And you want to be sure that you have this uh, experience on your side. And of course, if you're not able to go out and hire that individual, then being able to develop this skill set in house is going to be essential. Very briefly, I want to be able to tell you what WAKIF has to offer here when it comes to DC, uh, well, rather government contracting. Um, we have a couple of different products here that can help you on your journey of uh, get, gaining access to capital to win those all important contracts and also for you to be able to sustain yourself throughout uh, that journey of uh, being able to take care of all of your overhead, pay your employees, et cetera. Uh, so very briefly, I'm gonna go over with you a couple things here about WAKIF, of course, uh, in the area here, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, we've, uh, you've uh, run into our name uh, here or there. We've been here since 1987. And of course, um, I'm gonna run through this here so we can get over to Rebecca here. Um, we especially uh, work with underserved entrepreneurs in the community uh, within the Washington, D.C. area. And so as we go through this, um, I want to point out a couple of things. Our three strategic uh, pillars here, inclusive entrepreneurship, community wealth building, and equitable economic development. That is the reason that we're here. It's the reason why we are, uh, are of course, uh, moving to bring this type of information to you so that you can understand how to build. And we want to make sure we focus in the right areas. A couple of highlights here. Uh, just in terms of where we are, you'll see uh, over 18,000 uh, jobs created, $11 million deployed, about 2,000 uh, entrepreneurs have received support, and about 80% of those whom we serve are entrepreneurs of color. So please keep this in mind. And of course, uh, as we you take a look at a couple of our other stats here, 86% um, of minority businesses supported in 2020 through lending. As we move into our products that are offered, um, there are a couple that I want to bring your attention to. Of course, we offer micro loans, equipment financing, and working capital term loans. But we also have a contract term loan and a contract line of credit. Uh, that contract term loan, of course, will allow for you to get the ramp up funds needed for you to uh, begin uh, the newly won contract that you may have in place. Because, of course, you have to be able to pay your overhead, pay your staff, et cetera, before you're able to start re receiving payment on your invoices. And this is extremely important for you to be able to grow and take on those larger opportunities so that you can get that past performance to allow for you to qualify and win uh, new contracts. When we're speaking of uh, a line of credit, of course, we're talking about being able to fund your uh, business throughout the uh, term of that contract. And this is really based on your receivables, uh, much like a um, uh, invoice financing or invoice factoring sort of deal. If you, of course, uh, are invoicing and having to wait 30 days plus 30, 45, 60 days to get paid, this may run and uh, give you a problem when it comes to your cash flow. And we'd like to make sure that you're able to, um, I think Sheila, I'm going to mute you there. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I think that you're going to find that this type of product is very, very um, useful when you need to be paid on those invoices prior to being paid from your customer. So just to throw that out there in terms of how WakeGift can be of service to you, especially in the business to government space, the contract term loan for ramp up and the contract line of credit in order to uh, be paid or get access to capital and cash flow uh, prior to being paid uh, on your invoices there. And so I want to end on that note and give it back over to Rebecca. Rebecca, we have some very uh, some great questions here uh, in the Q&A, and I want to be able to um, get those answered for the folks out there who've been able to join us today. Um, starting off, I think that you know I, I kind of covered one of those questions here, which had to do with how to, of course, um, uh, get a hold and, and make sure that folks are, are leaving those reviews. And so I think that you answered that one just in terms of being able to, you know, correspond with people online or via email and say, hey, there's a link there that takes them to a specific page where they can 
um, create a review or is there some other process that they must go through? So that was one question here. And um, did you answer that one fully or did you want for me to, to move on uh, to the next question? I answered it fully, thank you. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so <clears throat> what I wanted to also move on to another question here that I saw that was, was great. Um, if you if you are um, if you already have Google My Business, you know, does that automatically convert to a Google Business profile? Um, I it, think that it's, it may be a simple question, but one that many need to answer out there. It, it does. It automatically. It's just a name change. They're streamlining it. Okay, great, great. And do you recommend any specific email marketing provider? Um, any, you know, the softwares or anything like that that folks can sort of turn to to kind of coordinate all of this in one space? Uh, sure. Um, I use Constant Contact um, for a couple of different clients. Uh, SCORE is a national partner with them. Um, I like it because it's really easy to use. It's very intuitive. Um, I can send an email out in 30 minutes um, if it's not too lengthy. And uh, we shouldn't be uh, creating emails that are too lengthy anyway. They should have one call to action, uh, just a couple of photos, and um, maybe a, 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 a small little paragraph. Um, you know, that, that's for um, success. That's general guidelines for um, success in email marketing. Great, great. Now, something that has come up and it's becoming a problem uh, from what I can uh, tell you from interacting with clients and uh, just folks out there in uh, the digital world. How can one remove fraudulent reviews? And of course, these can be uh, put up by um, disgruntled customers or even competitors. What's the process to do so? And is this, is this possible? It is definitely possible. I mentioned it during the webinar that here locally, we had some problems with um, a certain industry that was being bombarded. And some of them thought that it was one of their competitors that hired a company from overseas to bombard each of these different Google, business, Google My Business uh, profiles with these fake reviews. Um, it wasn't easy. It took a lot of petitioning, but if you petition Google and um, you, you have records to show that this person was never a client. They might ask for some records, but these spam reviews were pretty easy to dispute. Um, you could tell it's spam and there were names that were like a bunch of consonants for the first name. And you know, it, it could, you could tell that they were just fake reviews. So Google took no time at all to, to pull those down. Um, but they have limited staff right now. Ever since COVID, they have, it, it takes longer to get stuff done. Um, so just bring your patience, uh, but know that there, there, is, there is a resolution and they, they will work with you. And so will Yelp. Yelp is a little bit more difficult than Google to take reviews down, um, but I would definitely try it. Gotcha, thank you. And of course, that is a bit of an issue out here. Um, when dealing with reviews online and competitors, et cetera. A question that, that we have here is, do you recommend using uh, a blog page for posting company updates and content, or would that be something that you would sort of lend to only do on social media? How do you feel about blog pages with posting updated content? Um, I think blogs are great for search engine optimization. It helps you get found online. The blog should reside on your website and it gives more traffic to your website. Um, a blog is a great opportunity to put keywords and, and, and again, help you with that search engine optimization. So if you have the time for a blog and it doesn't need to be a dissertation, um, we're talking maybe two or three paragraphs. Um, anything longer than that, you're probably not gonna get too many people to read the whole thing. Two paragraphs, short paragraphs. Um, and you don't have to write every day. I, I, run, I run into clients all the time that say, well, I started off with the blog every day. And by the third week, I was so burned out. I don't want to look at another blog. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to um, set such high overachiever expectations on yourself. You know, if you if you blog tw two or three times a month, that's great. Um, there's no nothing that says you have to blog every day. So um, I think it's great 
opportunity for search engine optimization and, and uh, to help your website um, get found online. Great. And in terms of, and you can give a brief synopsis here, we had a question that was, um, how do, will this, um, you know, working on your, uh, or um, crafting your social media strategy, how will this specifically help you to win government contracts? Can you speak to that a bit? Yes. Um, just by having that presence and by having your business with exposure online um, will give you that visibility and allow these decision makers to get to know you. Probably first, first and foremost, uh, hopefully on a personal level uh, via LinkedIn, and um, and then open that up for uh, the opportunity for them to get to know about your services, your um, that you provide. So um, believe it or not, people are searching for you, and if they can't find you, you don't exist. So get that social, get get all that di all your digital presence um, built up because even if you don't realize it, people are searching for you. And um, maybe they got a proposal about you or maybe they got, um, you know, a, a colleague recommended or another client recommended them to, um, to them. And they're thinking about it and they, they, they're searching online. If they're not finding anything, they're gonna go with the business that they found information online about. So you might be missing opportunities. Gotcha. And another question here, which delves over into email marketing. Uh, and of course, I think that some of us run into this issue of oversaturation. Um, how do you, or would you suggest, recommend segmenting um, your email messages so that you don't you know, oversaturate or kind of turn off uh, your audience in, in, in different you know, kind of sectors, however your, your customers are broken down, whatever customer segments you have, how would you recommend segmenting this so that you don't turn folks off? Sure. Um, first and foremost, I wouldn't email people too often. Um, if you're emailing once a week, that might be too much. Um, because again, like you mentioned, um, they're getting emails from so many different people. And not just that, they have many different email accounts. Now, um, you know, for me, I'm a freelancer, so I have email accounts for different businesses that I assist with. I must have 10 or 11 email accounts by now. So a lot of small businesses are the same way. They have multiple, they have their personal, their business, um, you know, when they use for learning, when they use for retail. I mean, there's a lot of emails out there. So you don't want to get lost in the shuffle. And the best way to do that is to send relevant content to contacts that you have permission to email. So I am a big proponent of permission based email. And to me, uh, a dirty word is email blast. I do not like the, the phrase email blast um, because that has a bad connotation to me. I hear email blast and I hear spam. I don't send spam. I don't send email blasts. I send communications and I send uh, stuff out strategically um, and I don't over inundate somebody's inbox. So those are the key things. As long as you do that and send relevant messages out, that your um, contacts can actually use, um, people will welcome you in their inbox time and time again. Gotcha, gotcha. And thank you for that. Again, a very rich presentation from you, Rebecca. Um, we had a question here. I think that um, it's a, one that we, it, it's a known, but I do want to pose the question just in case for other folks out there are wondering. Uh, and this is just to confirm, of course, all services offered by the DC PTAC are uh, free. Um, Sheila, if you want to speak to that, I'm not sure, but that was a question that came up here, uh, just in terms of all of the services that you broke down for us, uh, all of those services are free for the DC PTAC. Yes, most services are at no charge, for the most part. I don't, I don't think we've ever charged for anything. Okay. <laughs> No, no, no charge for the services, folks. So feel free no to reach out to, to the DCP TAC yes. uh, for help uh, within government contracting here. And then um, I think we also had a question here with regard to how to get in contact 
uh, with WAKIF. And I'll just throw up a, a quick share on the screen here in terms of getting in contact with WAKIF here. Um, I'm going to put that up here for you. What you'll do is to simply go out on to uh, the website and you will see that in the top upper uh, right hand corner, there's a section for getting help. Um, so please uh, feel free to check out wakeif.org. And I'll just kind of take you here so you can see this uh, for yourself. Uh, it'll, it'll look just like this, wakeif.org backslash sign up. I uh, need assistance and please feel free to fill out our online intake form and you can schedule an appointment with us. Of course, we'll go over uh, things uh, concerning your company, uh, rather that be uh, something within operations or if we can point you in the right direction or to discuss access to capital and the various products that may get you there. Uh, one last time, I think, Rebecca, if you can uh, just show your contact information on the screen here. Uh, we do very uh, much appreciate your being able to join us today and to give this information out to everyone. Uh, if you could I'll stop my sure. share and if you can put that up, that'd be wonderful. Absolutely. Okay, one second. Let me just hit this. Okay, feel free to go right ahead. Okay. And while she's doing that, I do want to say give a, also a big thanks to Lyle's uh, battle here at WAKIF uh, for being very instrumental in place, uh, putting together this presentation here brought to you today by the DCP TAC. Um, and uh, so uh, if he's online, he can feel free to say a couple words as well. Really enjoyed the presentation this morning. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Thank you, Sheila. Um, <clears throat> it was great to be able to uh, jointly present this information to you. It's something that um, is really making a difference in terms of the sex or success or failure of small business all across America. So again, thank you, Rebecca, for the excellent presentation. Do appreciate it. And Lou, thank you for the excellent job of hosting. Thank now, you. I'm sorry, Rebecca, now can people reach out to you for assistance with their websites or with Google Analytics or with anything, LinkedIn setups or anything? Um, yeah, if, if somebody has a question, feel free to contact me. And if I can't help you, I, I know resources that um, would be able to assist. So I can help you one way or the other. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. So I, I, I did see a question about um, Wix and building websites. Um, I, I, I like the, the build your own website stuff. For me, for, for the small businesses that I've assisted, it was enough, but some businesses need a, a richer website than you can do yourself on Wix or even Constant Contact, the, the email platform. And they use, they have a website builder that's built on um, artificial intelligence. So you just tell it what you, what type of business you are and it automatically finds photos it automatically finds, you know, it, it does a really great job of pulling together a website for you. Um, so all you have to do is plug in your info. But for some small business, I realize that, um, and any kind of business, um, they want access to, um, you know, a more rich website. Um, I would think that nowadays you could get a, a richer website for anywhere from a thousand to $3,000. Um, it is kind of expensive to have a website designer design your website, but it is an investment in your business. If you, um, if you do need that platform, that's much more richer than what you could do on your own. Um, but like I mentioned, do your due diligence and research, just don't hand over because these people, a lot of uh, small businesses have been taken advantage of and handed over $3,000 to somebody that said that they did websites and they just ran off with their money. So um, make sure you, you fact check, you know, the business that you wanna work with, talk to people that have used them, get referrals, that type of stuff. And I'll also just kind of plug in there, uh, feel free to utilize some of the online uh, resources for outsourcing or hiring talent. Uh, there are websites out there that are great, you know, Upwork, Fiverr, et cetera. There are some other um, websites that have a bit more specificity in terms of hiring designers, uh, content creators, et cetera. But you can take a look at their reviews. Uh, you can look at how other uh, past clients have rated them, their responses, much like you would buy a product on Amazon. You can take a look at a five-star uh, rating and, along with uh, reading reviews, et cetera. So uh, that's also, you know, something that, that, uh, you can do to help you, 
you know, uh, hire the talent that you need. Uh, what do you think about that, Rebecca? Absolutely, yes. Um, but with Fiverr, uh, a lot of those um, are not just going to be five dollars. People charge um, the regular rates on Fiverr, but you can get stuff for five dollars on Fiverr. Um, you're just going to get what you pay for. So, um, but there's still good there are good sites out there. There's you could also hire a freelancer. There's freelancer sites out there, or you could hire a freelancer. So there's all sorts of resources. Um, I would also check with PTAC to see if uh, they have any contacts. Um, your local small business development center, your local SCORE chapter, um, they might have some great ideas for people. Um, and then of course you can contact me and I can either assist you or point you in the right direction. So um, as I, I'm a freelancer and I do some of this on my own, so um, I can assist where I can. And, and I'd, be, I'd be willing to um, work with you for the first hour and, and just, you know, answer any questions that you might have. We might not get to all the questions here. So feel free to contact me, um, text or call me on my mobile or email me, and we can set up a time to go through your questions one-on-one -on -one if we happen to not get to your question. That's great. That's great. And thank you so much for that. I was going to say, anyone that wants to charge you $5 to work on your website, please don't hire them, folks. <laughs> yeah, you might get what you pay for. <laughs> please, please. Okay. Um, so there you have it, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone, again, for joining uh, here with us today. Um, we will have this recording uh, made available. Uh, we, of course, this will go out via... Uh, email with the link. I think, Esty, if I'm wrong, uh, please correct me. Or, of course, um, we'll make this available via uh, through Wake If uh, here. But I'm also going to send a copy of the recording over to, or rather, not myself, but we'll send a copy of the recording over to the DCP TAC, as well as to uh, Rebecca. And that way, the panelists who are online with us today will have a copy of that as well. Okay. Um, thanks, everybody. It's been beautiful. Um, happy to bring everything, uh, this information to you today. We're going to sign off now. It's 1130. Thank you for joining in with us.